Google thinks it knows all the things we want to save. If we just type save the, it'll give us a lot of ideas that it thinks we want. Save the date, save the last dance, save the bees, save the world, even turtles. Tell you what, today we're going to leave all the turtles behind because I'm feeling lucky. What do I want to save? Speech sounds and prot. So by now you probably have figured out how to make your VOT continuum in prot. And in all the videos I've been saying, oh, we'll save it later, we'll save it later. Well, at long last, today's the day where we take those sounds and actually put them on a file on your computer so you can open up that folder and see all your wonderful output. At long last, today's the day to save your VOT continuum. Let's see how it's done. Okay, so here we are back in Prot, and we have our VOT continuum script called up and loaded into the Prot scripting window. We have a couple of sounds ready to go, and these are the demonstration sounds that we've been using in a lot of these videos. So, when I click to run the script, everything's going to work as normal. I can set the number of steps, the endpoint values of my continuum, as well as the F0 information, or pitch contour information. And now, we're going to see what happens when we choose to save all the files and info. So if you are saving, these next two lines turn out to be pretty important. So this uh, field right here is where you type in the, the name of a folder on your computer that already exists. So in this case, I'm saving it to a desktop folder called Speech Continua. You don't have to type in this exact file path, you just have to make sure that whatever path you type in is, in fact, on your computer. So I don't need to put anything else in here yet. All I need to do is make sure that this folder exists. So that's the name of it. And this next field here will determine a new folder or a subfolder that will be created in that parent folder. So essentially, when I open this up, after I've created this continuum, there'll be a new folder that has all my sounds in it. So whatever you type into that text field there will determine the name of that subfolder. You, you don't want it to be called something like new folder every time. You want a transparent and helpful name so you can keep track of what you did. This thing down here will just determine the name that goes in front of the file name. So for example, dtvot1, dtvot2, and so on. So let's run the script and see what it does. The first thing it'll tell me is that I've made a new directory. So if I open up this folder now, we can see that there's a new subfolder created that has a couple of subfolders of its own. So nothing's created yet, it's just letting me know that they're going to be there waiting for me. And now I just run the script as normal. I select the D onset, the T onset sound. And in this case, because these are the demonstration sounds, my timing landmarks are already picked. I'm going to let it run as normal. It's done. And even though I can play with these sounds right here in the editor window, Tier. what I really want is to look in the folder and see what I've saved. So there are a few things that are here. Let's walk through. The most important things, obviously, are the actual stimuli that I've created. These are exactly the same ones as those in the info window, and you can see that they're numbered 1 through 7. It also saved the original sounds that I used, including deer, tier, the original aspiration that I extracted out of tier, and also a version of that aspiration that I actually used in the script, which might have included any lengthening that I need to do to stretch out to meet my demands of what I wanted in the continuum. It also lists the file names, just in case you need to produce a stimulus list for a program. And finally, another thing, just to make sure that this whole process is reproducible, it reproduces the info window that was printed out in Prot. So this includes the Prot version number and where it was saved, which sounds you selected, the timing landmarks that were selected, and a bunch of other information, such as, you know, the timing landmark for the vowel, what the actual durations were for the VOT steps, some inf extra information that we'll get into in the next video regarding the ratio of VOT and vowel cutback, F0 information, aspiration information, a bunch of other stuff that you would need if you want to reproduce this continuum and all you have were those original sounds. So suppose you want to create another continuum. We go back into the script, we remove what we just did, and suppose what I wanted to do was actually change one of these parameters. Let's say make an orthogonal continuum instead. So the only things I need to change 
is to make sure I create a new output folder. Now suppose I forget to do that and I start the script instead. It's going to ask me, do you still want to use that folder? Because if I do, I'm going to overwrite all those sounds that I just made. So I'm going to not want to do that. I want to exit right now. And let's try that over again. I'm going to create a new continuum with orthogonal cues. And this time I'm going to rename that output folder orthogonal. Now when I run it, I made a new folder right next to the old one. Now it says, you're about to create a lot of sounds. Do I want to keep them in the list? In this case, 35 I think is okay for my computer to handle, but suppose I made a continuum that had, I don't know, 200 sounds? That might slow down the computer a little bit and just mess things up a little bit. So maybe I'll remove them all the way. So I'll demonstrate what that looks like here. I select deer and tier. Now, you'll recall that all the timing landmarks will automatically select because we're using the demonstration sounds. It's doing a lot of work. And in the end, nothing's changed about the object list. But you know it did something because we go into the stimulus folder and there are all the sounds, including all the information, as well as information in this case about the F0 steps. So this time we changed the length of the aspiration, the VOT, as well as the F0 as well. So hopefully using these tools, you can not only create continua, let's say for classroom exercises and demonstrations, but also save them for perceptual experiments and keep good records so that when you write up your methods, you know exactly what the parameters were.